Hello there. Can everybody hear me all right? Okay, I think I'm I think I'm playing. There have been a couple times where I thought I was talking and it actually turned out that I was on mute. But I think everybody can hear me. So that was one thing that I was actually going to talk about tonight is the theme music. Um, I have an idea for a theme song. And somebody who uh, told me that they'll actually be willing to uh, help me out with that. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, everybody, everybody's saying that they can hear me. So, so we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, so I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is that Ted Davies ended up canceling uh, his appearance on the show. Um, I swear to God, I did not make up the fact that he was going to be on the show. Uh, he said that he would be on the show, uh, and uh, he said that he had uh, some type of stomach bug uh, came up over the weekend. So let's all wish Ted a speedy recovery. So this will probably be a little bit of a shorter show tonight since it's going to be another solo show by me. But um, the reason I'm saying that this is good news is I actually have a lot of stuff to talk about. In fact, I was actually wondering how I was going to fit in all the stuff that I have to talk about and interview Ted Davies at the same time. So I guess Ted canceling solves that problem, right? Okay. So upcoming show, upcoming shows, as you know, Mike Jimmy is going to be here. Um, now next week or next month, we have a couple cool people. Rodney Fike, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Rodney Fike is going to be here the month of June. Uh, I don't remember offhand which week, but he's going to be here one of these days in June. And also a friend of mine named Dan Barlow, who I met when I was in Dayton, when I was in Gem when I went to Gem City Con, uh, I met a guy named Dan Barlow who does a cool little werewolf comic book. And he's going to be on the show in June. And we're also going to figure out a way to reschedule Ted Davies. So I guess what we'll do is I'll introduce the pages and then we can kind of get more into the news or at least my idea of, of what counts as the news, the news in my life anyways. So this is another page from one of the stories in memoirs of the morbid. Uh, if you guys remember, I've talked about this story in the past this is a story by the name of Three Strikes and You're Dead. Um, it's a neat little story. It's about a former professional baseball player who goes to work at a, he's kind of at a low point in his life, and he ends up working at a retirement home as a custodian. And while he's uh, at this, I shouldn't call it a retirement home. I think it's called an assist. I think the politically correct term is assisted living. Um, while he's working there, he discovers that, um, that there are these ghosts who are kind of like feeding on some of the patients. Uh, by the way, I really like this guy's art. I did not draw this. I should mention that. This the art here is by a gentleman by the name of Alberto P P Pessoa. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. 
And I think it has a very Mike Magnola vibe to it. I like the bold, thick lines. Well, I like the contrast between the thin lines and the bold lines. And I like kind of the simplicity of it. You know, there's not a lot of extra lines where they're not needed. Oops, I was going to show another page first. Um, so this is another page from Angie's story. If you remember uh, from before, Angie's story is called uh, Clean Up on Aisle 4. Um, and this takes place in a grocery store where um, they cater to customers who may not be quite human. Uh, some of the customers end up also becoming um, the product. Um, the artist on these pages was a guy by the name of J.P. Villachez. And I think he did a really great job. I love like the bold blacks, the contrast between the black and the white. Some interesting layout ideas. I will say the one thing was I did letter these pages and it was hard to find room for the little word balloons. And that that's really the only thing that I don't like about this art. But that's all right, he'll, he'll work on that. That's not a big thing. So here's another page I drew. I'm, I'm just joking. Yeah, I was negative 60 years old when I drew this. Okay, so obviously this is not my art. So why did I include this in uh, the art? Well, one of the things that I'm gonna try my hand at is I'm going to try my hand at doing a, uh, a parody cover. Oh, hey, Angie. I didn't think Angie was going to watch tonight. I thought she was watching a movie. Thank you for checking in, Angie. Um, she can probably hear me from the other room. Uh, so anyways, back to this. Why, why did I include artwork that I didn't do? This is... This is by an artist by the name of Joe Schuster, obviously the the create one of the co-creators of Superman. Uh, and I'm going to try my hand at a parody cover because I've always liked parody covers. And this is what I have so far. Um, obviously, this is not done. I'm going to continue putting the shading on the Beowulf, um, on the lettering. This is the drawing itself. Uh, so this was by a friend of mine named Tony Pisana. And then uh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna ink it and I'm gonna color it. Um, and I think he got the pose pretty good, right? Maybe Superman's head is down a little bit further, right? Yeah, I think Superman is slumped over maybe a little bit more, but no, uh, maybe his right his right leg. You see, Superman's right leg is like the back a little bit more, but see, that's that's the beauty of being an inker. I can. That's the beauty of being an inker. You can go back and and um, fix stuff like that. So I'm gonna. So I'll probably be working on this tonight, and then I'll try to get all the different elements in. And maybe I'll work on that tonight too. So what? It, oh, okay. So this is one of the first things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. One of the really cool things is 
Uh, our show now has sponsors. Um, so I talked to a friend of ours, uh, a mutual, both, both Angie and I are friends with this guy, Dan Yost. Um, he's one of our neighbors and he lives, he lives about two, maybe three blocks away from us. And he owns this recording studio called Just Records. And um, he's going to help me record the theme song for. Uh, he's going to help me record the theme song for the show, and in return, I'm going to give him some free advertising. So who knows? The chances that anybody who lives in in Pittsburgh is watching this stream and needs, you know, some help recording pretty slim, but, um, you never know if you guys, if anybody who's watching this lives in Pittsburgh and needs a, uh, help recording. And he, he records a lot of stuff. He records audiobooks. He records rap. I mean, obviously, he records a lot of local bands, but um, he also, but uh, he, like I said, he's going to help me record the theme song. I already have an idea for the theme song, not just the music, but also the visuals. Uh, I played it for Angie earlier, and Angie seemed to enjoy it, so I don't know. We'll see how that turns out. So we also have another sponsor for our show. Um, our good friend, Joe Bachman, actually. And I, I asked Joe if he wanted me... Oh, I'm supposed to be drawing while I, while I do this, right? Sorry, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Joe Bachman decided to become a sponsor for the show. And the beauty of that is he's going to pay for, well, I don't know if you want how into the nuts and bolts he wants to get, but um, we'll just say that he was, he was very nice. And um, hopefully we'll be able to, to make some upgrades to the show because of of Joe's generosity. Um, I would be playing Joe's. I would be playing Joe's advertisement tonight, but Joe said that he wanted to, to make some changes to it. So, um, yeah, I agree, Carl. That was very cool of Joe. Um, so hopefully. When Joe gets uh, whatever worked out with um, the advertisement that he needs to get done, then then we can uh, I'll play his ad for him. So let me see. Let me see what else we wanted to talk about tonight. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure you guys, if you guys follow my social media. You already know the big news, which is that Beowulf got delivered this past week. Oh, so Joe, so Joe's show is going on. Apparently, apparently Joe's show is going on hiatus for a little, uh, for a little while, but. Yeah, considering that I haven't do been doing this show that long, um, yeah, that's pretty, to get two sponsors is not too bad, right? Um, yeah, so I think she's referring to the fact that, yeah, Beowulf got shipped. I have a whole big stack of Beowulf on my uh, kitchen table, and right now, Angie and I just have to sit down, and yes, I do... Uh, I draft Angie into helping me with 
the um, the Kickstarter. She we we sit and we we bag and board uh, while we watch Netflix, or while we watch goofy shows on on YouTube. So so thank so you can thank Angie for. Or you can blame Angie if it's taking too long to get your comic book. No, I'm just joking. Don't blame Angie. Uh, okay, so as far as upcoming shows, this weekend we have the Pittsburgh Comic Show. And in a couple weeks, we have Three Rivers Comic Convention. Now, why is Three Rivers Comic Convention important? It is my all time favorite comic book convention. And I don't even feel bad about saying that because, well, I don't think any of the other run any of the other people who run conventions would care. First of all, but um, yeah, it's a it's it's the biggest convention in this area that I would describe as being a real comic book convention. And what I mean by that is I feel like nowadays um, a lot of comic book conventions are just getting kind of watered down. You know, a lot of these comic book conventions, they realized, you know, oh, if we get... If we get one guest who doesn't have anything to do with comic books, we can attract a whole bigger crowd. You know, whether it's Paula Abdul or, or Chevy Chase or or who whoever. And the problem is, before you know it, the entire convention is just taken over by uh these celebrity guests who really have nothing to do with um, comic books. So the thing that I like about, about the, um, the three rivers comic con is that that that's a true comic book convention. I know, I know the guy who runs the three rivers comic con. His name is John Engel. He's a really nice guy. I've been to his comic book shop quite a few times. And um, and he's a true comic book lover. And he's not going to let that convention get corrupted. So now, um, this past weekend, we did... What's Angie saying about me? Now that Grant has sponsors, you all have to you all have got to help us bring more viewers. Share this champ. Yeah, that's the only thing we're missing, I think. Well, once I have my theme song, I think that's then that's gonna be the only thing we're missing. We're missing viewers. But um what we lack what we lack in quantity we make up for in quality, right? At least that's the way I see it. Um So I was going to tell you guys about, and don't ask me why I just undid that, that, uh, uh, ink line that I just did. Uh, it's purely a subjective thing. I have no idea why one line is better than the other. Maybe it was a little bit wavy. I don't know. Um, Okay, but as I've been trying to allude to, uh, this past weekend, we went to the Greater Pittsburgh Festival of Books, also known as Pittsburgh Book Fest. And as Angie can attest to, it was quite the adventure. Um, so, you know, we got into the car, we got all our comic books, we got all our comic books together. And as we're walking out to the car, the, uh, the little, the hole in the box where you're supposed to grab onto, 
it ripped. And all my comic books just went, just splayed out across our driveway. So that was the first kind of sign that this was not going to be a great day. Mind you, at this point, it wasn't really raining, but it was kind of drizzling at this point. So, um, so fortunately, Angie helped me. She, she was able to grab, fortunately, we have some grocery bags in our, um, in our, uh, trunk and she was able to grab them really quickly. And, uh, that really helped me and we got all the comic books together and we drove we drove over to the um the gentleman who was was uh sharing a booth with us uh, i think he he's watched the show before he sometimes comes in and uh contributes on the um yeah thank you carl I, we appreciate that so uh, the guy we were sharing a booth with is the guy who sometimes uh, uh, watches the show under the name Heroinberg. And um, so we went and picked him up and we went to Greater Pittsburgh Book Fest. And by this point, it's, there's like a downpour. It's really raining outside and we get to the the greater pittsburgh book fest and last year the book fest was was inside but they decided to change that for some reason and now the greater pittsburgh book fest is outside you know last year when it was you know 65 degrees outside and sunny, they had it inside. This year, for whatever reason, there's it's like practically a tropical monsoon, and for whatever reason, they decided to have it outside. So we we start. So you know we get our stuff, and we're we're like trying to figure out where our spot is, and you know I I say to one of the volunteers, oh, I guess you guys haven't set up our tent yet. And they're like, set up your tent? What are you talking about? No, we, we're not setting up tents. All of these tents that you see belong to, you know, the people who, who uh, the people in the booth brought all these tents. And I was like, okay, we might have a problem because none of us own tents. Um, so, you know, I mean, we're standing there, uh, you know, we're keeping the comic books dry, but that's about the only thing that's staying dry. And I, and I remember just looking over at Angie multiple times and just thinking, let's go find like a waffle house. Let's go find someplace where we can get a stack of pancakes or a waffle or an omelet. Let's forget about the greater Pittsburgh book fest. Like this is nuts. So, Angie and I probably would have just left because honestly, I mean, the nice thing about the, the Greater Pittsburgh Book Fest is that it's a, a charitable endeavor. Um, they don't charge a table fee. So we wouldn't have even lost any money by just getting the hell out of there. But um, one of the volunteers had an idea, not just... Uh, not just Angie and I and our friend, but there were a couple other exhibitors 
who didn't have a table. And um, the volunteers idea, they, there was like a little like overpass, uh, like a little like kind of like an overhang where, you know, we could go underneath there. And uh, I want to make it clear, I'm not, I'm not criticizing this volunteer because I think this volunteer really came up with the best idea they could, but it was really still not very ideal because, I mean, we were, we were under this overhang, but we were still very, very, very far from the rest of the book fest. And it's funny, like, <clears throat> I was going to pull aside uh, the other guy who we were sharing a table with, and I was going to say, you know what, man, let's, let's just get the hell out of here. Let's go someplace where we can get a nice, maybe there's someplace serving brunch. Maybe we could even get a beer, you know, <clears throat> I, my philosophy was like, just let's just get out of here. Okay, I haven't uh, I haven't checked uh, the chat in a while. Yeah, Carl says good, quick thinking on saving the books. Yeah, that was that was almost a disaster. Uh, Joe's gone to bed. We understand. Thanks again, Joe, and. Uh, if you watch this back, make sure you get me the ad that you wanted me to play. And everybody's saying goodnight. Carl says, sounds like bad communication for that book fest and not so good planning. Um, I mean, I'm kind of at the point where I would rather just not do outdoor events. Um, I mean, honestly, um, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I mean, you know, the stuff we make is made out of paper. So it's kind of like, um, you know, it, paper and rain don't combine. And, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not disparaging the city we live in. But I, I mean, I hate to say it, Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, it rains a lot. In Pittsburgh, it really rains a lot. So, um, uh, I mean, especially in spring. So, I mean, well. So, anyways, um, you know, back to. Uh, book fest, you know, Angie and I are kind of like talking about it, and and I'm kind of like, you know what, Angie, let's just get out of here. We'll just, we'll just, you know, we'll just get back in the car. We'll we'll type, we'll type waffles into the GPS, and we will have like a nice little breakfast. And we will get the hell out of here, you know. Um, and while we were talking about this, the volunteer and uh, the guy we were sharing a booth with ran and got um, ran and got the table and some chairs. And you know, at that point, at that point, I. I really felt guilty for just saying, let's leave because they, they had obviously put some work into this. So I said to Angie, you know what? Let's put a little bit of effort into this. We'll, we'll give it an hour. If, you know, we don't, if we don't get any customers at all, because I mean, that was the other thought that was going through my head. My head, what was going through my head was, who's going to wake up on a Saturday morning and say to themselves, oh, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to go to a mud-soaked field and stand around in some rain for a couple hours. 
So, I mean, besides the fact that we were going to be standing out in this miserable rain, I, I was very, I mean, you can call me negative, but I was really not expecting any, any customers at all. Okay, so let's see what's going on in chat. Donna has an armful of cat. That's a good thing to have an armful of. We had a similar event at a library, and we all got crowded under one tent. We didn't sell anything to the public. Luckily, the library bought some books. So that's happened to me before where um, we had one event where we did a signing at a, a comic at a it actually wasn't a comic book shop. It was a collectible shop. And <coughs> excuse me. We had a uh, uh, it, the thing was we didn't sell a lot of comic books, but before we left, the guy who owned the collectibles shop was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll take like five of each of your comic books," and I was like, "Oh, mama, that's like twenty five comic books." So yeah, so that day turned out to be not too not too bad. Yeah, we made the book fest work, but Grant and I have been in some ridiculous situations, so we so we have adapted many times. Yeah, got to be ready for just about anything to spring on you. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> so I I'm standing there. We were so cut off from the rest of the book fest. There were literally some customers who came up to our booth and asked. So which way do we go to get to the book fest? And um, uh, yeah, so I think like the third time somebody asked me, um, what way, where, how do we get to the book fest? Angie said to me, uh, hey, Grant, there was like a slight tone in your voice when you were answering them. And I was like, uh, well, well, what do you want? Like, what do you expect? I mean, you don't think that it's a little bit insulting for somebody to walk up to somebody with a, you know, a table full of books and say to them, which way to the book fest? Uh, but um, yeah, Angie was right. Sometimes you have to uh, let stuff like that roll off your back. Um, so, you know, the first hour was maybe a little rough, but I remember, I think sometimes it just takes that first set sale to get your, um, to get your, uh, self-confidence up a little bit. And, uh, we actually ended up not having too bad of a day. Um, to quote the lovely Angie Dudas, um, the fact that we're selling any comic books, considering how bad the situation is, is pretty good. Um, and I mean, and I mean, we ended up making over a hundred dollars, which again, like I said, Considering how horrible the situation was, I think more important than that, um, we met a woman who's pretty high up in the Pittsburgh or the uh, in Pittsburgh. It's called the Carnegie Library. The system of libraries in in Pittsburgh is referred to as the Carnegie Library because it's it's named after Andrew Carnegie because even though Andrew Carnegie was a scumbag, there's a lot of stuff in Pittsburgh named after him because he donated money to a lot of stuff. Like that's, that's one of those things that drives me nuts. Like a guy can be a complete dirt bag his whole life. And then in the last like four or five years, he don't, nobody, nobody looks into how he made his millions, but Oh, he, he donated a million dollars to this library. Therefore he must be a great person. But anyways, um, I'm going off on a tangent. 
uh, we met a lady who was was high was pretty high up in the Carnegie Library system, and she was talking to us about you know maybe getting our books in the um, the library system here in Pittsburgh, which would be pretty freaking cool if we can pull that off. So Carl says, yeah. Yeah, hi, this is the start of the book fest right here. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why I had to explain that to people, but yeah. You did well. We've had shows that we paid for a table and didn't sell a single book. Depends on the promotion. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, I mean, I have to say that about um, the Pittsburgh book fest. I mean, it was very, very, very well promoted. I mean... I mean, a couple days before Pittsburgh Book Fest, I was driving down the road and I saw a billboard that said in big letters, you know, hey, Greater Pittsburgh Festival of Books. And I mean, I got to tell you, um, that's a good feeling when you're when you're driving down the road and you see a billboard for the event that you're going to be you're going to be at in a couple days. It's like. Okay, well, at least they're spending some money on promotion, right? But, um, yeah, I mean, at, at to quote Angie, the fact that we sold any books was kind of a miracle, and we should be proud of that, and I am. Now, later in the day, um, we when we were getting ready to go, you know, I went... And I, I grabbed, you know, I got my keys and I went to go pull the car around so that we could start loading stuff into the car. And I was kind of walking around um, like the main book fest area. And I, like, I started looking around and, and seeing how many people were at this book fest. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, there were a lot of people at this book fest. And that's when I started to think like, oh man, think about how many people we could have, think about how much money we could have made if we had been part of the, the main book fest. And that, and I think sometimes when your brain starts to go places like that, it's almost like you have to like turn your brain off because you really can't, you can't focus on, oh, look at all the money we could have made. Um, you know, you, you, you have to focus on the money that you did make. And, um, yeah, overall, uh, I think we did well. Um, like I said, we made a good connection. We saw we saw uh, Justin Makuga, who was a spokesman for Aftershock Comics, um, and he's a really good guy. He gave us a CD of his music, which we can't figure out how to play his music because we don't, none of us own a CD player anymore, but um, yeah, he's another really nice guy. He goes to a lot of these conventions. Like I said, he used to be a rep for um, Aftershock comics. Um, and he's still out, you know, beating the drum for Aftershock, but even though um, things aren't looking too great for them from a financial standpoint. But um, no, I don't have a CD. I don't have a CD player on my computer, believe it or not. Um, they're now making computers without CD players. Um, 
Yeah, so the the bottom line is when when we first got out of the car and we were going to Bookfest, I thought, oh my god, this is this is absolutely a nightmare. I don't know what we're going to do. We need to I just want to turn back around and go home. I'm, and I want to crawl under like 15 blankets and forget this day ever happened. And we didn't do that. Um, and it turned out to be a pretty big success. Um, so I don't know what the lesson is. Maybe the lesson is uh, not to jump to conclusions, right? We went to one show that was so total crap. I don't think any outsiders came. They announced later that next year's would take place during the Big Park Fest and the event would be part. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like a better idea anyways. Um, I don't know. Do you think you'll go next year, Donna? I don't know. Yeah, we will have horrible shows. Then the next one turns out great. It's a gamble. But one has to try. Yeah, I, I'm i still trying to figure out... Um, I'm still trying to figure out if there's any science to figuring out which, which shows work and which shows don't work, right? We almost agreed to go back. Then we found out it's not only at the park where the fest is going to be. It's across town in somebody's yard. Oh, wow. Can you say rummage sale? Wow. Yeah, that's... It was going to be in somebody's backyard. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I have to thank Angie because while I was pulling the car around, Angie uh, used her salesmanship skills. So something that I have to say about Angie is her, her dad it, uh, was a professional salesman up until recently. Um, but Angie definitely inherited her dad's salesmanship skills. Um, Angie, the difference between me and Angie is that Angie actually has has salesmanship skills. Um, I sometimes get sales by accident, but Angie's actually, you know, legitimately good at it. I read that. You learn to avoid some promoters and stick with the good ones. Um yeah, I, I'm slowly starting to to figure out the um, there. There are some signs that it's going to be a bad convention um, or a bad show. Um, like I like I said, if when you look at the advertisement, if you know they're billing it as a comic book show. And you look at the advertisement, and 90% of the stuff that, that's on the advertisement has nothing to do with comic books. Um, that's a sign that you need to... Uh, um, avoid those conventions. Um, the sweet spot seems to be like the medium-sized conventions where they're not too big, they're not too small, they're just kind of in the middle. Um, because the big conventions, um, guys like us who are kind of on uh, more towards the beginning of their notoriety, tend to get lost. Um, oh, we've got more we've got more comments. 
Yeah, Angie says I'm good. She's very humble too. I sell more Mad Gasser books than Carl does at shows. <laughs> um, yeah, we had we had that problem about two or three weeks ago when we went to West Virginia. Um, one of the guys who was going to go with us, uh, one of the guys who was going to go with us, ended up having to cancel last minute. But he gave us a stack of his comics before uh, before we left, <laughs> and and uh, I think the guy who was with me sold almost as many copies of the book that for the guy who didn't show up as he did his own books. And Carl is agreeing with Angie, so that's good. So wow, wow, look at that. So all by myself. I didn't even have a guest, and I've been talking 45 minutes. Oh, so I wrote down on a piece of paper everything that I wanted to say. And when I was underneath where it says Greater Pittsburgh Festival of Books, I just wrote an equation. I wrote outdoor plus rain plus comic books equals sucks. So I think that that's kind of the bottom, the bottom line, right? Well, okay. So yeah, so he's going to a convention in a couple weeks in Charlotte. Charlotte uh, is that North or is that South Carolina? I can't remember which one's Charlotte is in. So yeah, so I'm going to give him a stack of my comic books before he goes, and I'm going to tell him don't bring me. Don't bring me any of these books back. Bring me money, but don't bring me any any comic books back because I want you to sell all of these. Yeah, so that seems sounds fair to me. Um, so I think I'm gonna start wrapping this up because, like I've said before, forty five minutes is about where I like to close these things off and you know it's crazy we almost didn't need ted davies tonight um don't get me wrong i love ted and i always like to hear him talk and i always find he has a lot of interesting stuff to say but really We, we filled almost an entire episode. Well, we didn't almost fill an episode. We filled an, an entire episode. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, here's what it looks like. I got, I got a fair amount done for... I mean, I probably only drew there for about... 25 or 30 minutes, right? But yeah, so this is going to be in the back. This is going to be in the pinups for issue six of Beowulf. And uh, yeah, and I started working a little bit on issue six of Beowulf. So I think I'm going to call it a night with that thank you carl and donna and angie yeah thanks carl uh, i appreciate it um i hope you guys are back next week oh my goodness i don't think i can pronounce next week's guest um oh my goodness i I think it's Fon Sismoniac. Um, you know what? I'll put it in the chat. I have no idea how to pronounce her last name, but that is... Um, that is going to be who our guest next week is. 
And it's going to be an interesting conversation because from what I've seen of her art, it is very, very, um, very, very uh, anime and manga inspired. And I don't know anything about that style. So um, hopefully we'll all learn some something about this. Yeah, so I guess Carl and Donna know her. But um, yeah, so that should be an interesting discussion. And I look forward to seeing and hearing from you guys all again next week. And uh, well, I was going to say maybe I'll have the theme song done by then, but I, I, that would be working really, really fast. So I'm not, I'm definitely not going to promise that. But uh, I will be back next week, and uh, there'll be all types of new stuff to talk about. Maybe something crazy at the Pittsburgh Comic Show will happen. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Have a great night.